Hello everybody, I'm Tease the Atomic Jedi and on this channel I try to explain what goes on in the world of energy. And today we are going to talk about England, the United Kingdom in effect, and what is going on right there. So here you see the map of the UK with all its nuclear power plants highlighted. Now some of these power plants are still operational, which are the blue markers. Some of these plants are still in the construction which is the green marker and then you have um, the yellow markers those are the sites with advanced gas cooled reactors the ones that were uh, commercially operational until a couple of years ago and the orange the deep orange ones uh, those are the magnox reactor sites now why is it interesting to talk about uh, nuclear electricity nuclear power in the UK currently well they just had they just got a new uh, government so they switched from uh, Tories um, the conservatives to labor and what you see is a, a switch of sentiment so generally speaking the labor people are less positive about nuclear power plant and the conservatives are more positive about nuclear energy. So currently there is this uh, petition going on, Save British Nuclear. And they say, okay, Keir Starmer and Ed Miliband, 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 uh, don't scrap the UK's new nuclear power program. Um, now, what are they talking about here? Uh, let me first um, go to this page here. This is uh, from the Nuclear Industry in, Nuclear Institute in the UK. Um, what you basically see is that the UK government, um, they, they, they have expressed a, a willingness to, uh, to, to grow the nuclear power industry up to 24 gigawatts of cap capacity by 2050. And to do this, you need to train up a whole new workforce, you have to tool up a, a new industry, uh, which will be capable of delivering on that promise. Now, when we go to the BBC, what you see is one, one of the promises that was made in, in you know, uh, in, in, in accordance to this uh, ambition that they, that they posited to the 24 gigawatts, was that the site Wilfa, which is in Wales, um, was selected to be the site for a new nuclear power plant. Now, what nuclear power plant exactly is going to build? No, going to be built? Nobody knows. Uh, the site used to be owned by uh, Hitachi wanted to build uh, an ESBWR reactor there, which is a very large. Uh, uh, a boiling water reactor it's uh, 1500 or 1600 megawatts quite quite big uh, but the program basically failed uh, the, the reactor never never got built uh, and, and that's why Wilfa uh, up until today stays unused so when we go to the uh, to the to the picture here uh, we can we can find Wilfa pretty quick oh let's see is this Wilfa yeah this is Wilfa um, so what you see is there used to be a Magnox reactor here. Um, whether that building still is there, I don't know. It probably is. So if they want to build a new nuclear reactor, they have to build it, you know, somewhere adjacent to the site. Um, but this seems to be one of the, the most interesting places to start building a new nuclear power reactor. The other one, uh, which is in the works, is here, Sizewell. So what you have here, this is Sizewell A, and this is Sizewell B, which is the only pressurized water reactor in Great Britain. And right next to it, over here, in this ter terrain over here, they are going to build uh, two EPRs. Uh, they're going to be the same, roughly, as the ones that are being built right here in Hinkley Point C, which is in the southwest of the United Kingdom. So there's a plan to build two new reactors here. 
Two new reactors are being built here, and there are plans to develop this site to host other nuclear power plants. So the question is, what kind of plant that will be? Nobody knows at this moment. But the United Kingdom, the government basically uh, bought the site back from Hitachi for 160 million pounds. Now, when we are going to... Uh, this news article on new uh, civil engineer right here. Uh, here again, you can you can see the Wilfa uh, nuclear power plant the way it is today probably, um, and they say okay, government is considering scrapping Wilfa plants and the twenty four gigawatt nuclear capacity target, and this scrapping this twenty four gigawatt nuclear capacity target really doesn't make much sense. Um, as for Wilfa, uh, honestly, I, I believe that you should find a commercial partner, uh, team up with them, and try to develop w whatever uh, nuclear power plant that you can do over there. But in this uh, article, they basically uh, tell us that um, they're considering scrapping uh, this 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 policy, and. Um, yeah, this is this is this is going to be bad because um, they still use a lot of gas. So let's go to uh, the electricity production in the United Kingdom. This timeline goes all the way up to 2023. Uh, let's just take 2023. The rest is not that uh, relevant at this moment. So what you see is when we go to these these figures, we get we get all these nice figures over here. We see that nuclear still accounts for 13% of all the electricity that is being produced in England, in the United Kingdom, uh, in 2023. We see that other renewables are 10.72%, which is mostly biomass. Then there's a little bit of hydropower. There's not that much solar. Wind is pretty sizable. They have roughly 30 gigawatts of wind capacity installed today. Uh, but the biggest, the biggest source of electricity is still gas. And if we go to the to the the, the, the current situation, what you see right now, uh, time is 9:45 a.m. This is the the grid.imk.com website, and this on this website you can pretty you can pretty pretty accurately see how much uh, electricity is being produced at this moment and what you see is that nuclear uh, hums away with uh, almost five gigawatts uh, wind is doing very poorly with 2.27 gigawatts out of a out of 30 gigawatts that is installed so less than 10 percent is operational solar is doing much better than i expected with uh, four gigawatts but the brunt of the electricity production in the united kingdom at this moment is, is still gas natural gas 11.15 gigawatts being produced at this moment if we look at the figures from a from a year's perspective, then you can see that wind is pretty big, 32.7%. Nuclear, not that bad, with almost 15%. And, and gas, uh, you know, gas got trumped by wind. Uh, they only did 26.4% average in the past year. Now, let's see... Um, <clears throat> Because it's 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 pretty important to put this into perspective. So first we go to the 2023 figures here. And what you see is that there was roughly 40 gigawatts of fossil fuel capacity installed. 33%. Um, it, it was good for 33% of all the electricity that was produced in the United Kingdom. Accounting for roughly 100 terawatt hours um, that they produced. Now biomass... That's a that's a little tricky uh, because biomass is actually just coal-fired power plants, but they run on on wood chips now instead of coal. Almost eight gigawatts or seven and a half gigawatts, uh, producing fifteen terawatt hours uh, in 2023. And nuclear was uh, is still six gigawatts, almost six gigawatts, doing fourteen point two percent. And then you have wind, 29.4%, and solar, 4.9%. And the issue is, when you look at these capacity figures, then they should uh, do better, but that's just inherent in renewables. 
especially in a country like the United Kingdom, where, first of all, they have a lot of cloud cover on average during the year, but this also means that it's pretty windy, uh, which means that wind generally does slightly better than it would do, for instance, in the United States. Um, let's let's have a look at, for instance, here, uh, because this is this is one of the uh, th this is the only marker that's on here that isn't nuclear. Uh, this is actually the Drex uh, coal-fired power plant. It's now been turned into a uh, into a biomass uh, biomass power plant. And the trouble is, this used to be the biggest. Uh, coal plant in Europe, it, it, it's still a big plant, uh, and they 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 burn a lot, a lot of uh, wood chips, uh, which are being delivered by countries like Finland, Sweden, but also Canada and the United States. Uh, so this is this is a very dirty uh, power plant. Now, if we want to defeat fossil fuels, then sticking to the twenty four gigawatt target is actually smart so what i've done what i've done here is i've basically modeled what would happen if 24 gigawatts would be built in the 2023 grid and what you see is that nuclear would then basically produce 58 percent of all the electricity that is needed in the uk which clearly indicates that nuclear uh, is a very safe bet. If you want to build 24 gigawatts by 2050, uh, the figure would be lower, I believe, because what we are going to see in the future is that uh, we are going to get sustainable fuels, uh, we are going to get more use of hydrogen, we are going to get more, uh, you know, we, we are going to get industries moving away from using fossil fuels as their as their input and requiring electricity or hydrogen uh, to do that job. So the demand, so this is the production figure, 292.7 terawatt hours. Don't be surprised if by 2050 this ends up being double that, 600 terawatt hours per year that they need uh, to run their, 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 their industry and their country. Now, will they be net zero by 2050? I don't know. If you look at how much capacity, how much gas capacity they still have, which is which is massive, uh, it's not 40, 40 gigawatts, but it's I believe thirty six gigawatts or thirty two gigawatts. Um, it, it can hold out hold out for a pretty long time, and the same can be said for Drex, you know, the the the, the coal fire power plant that I just showed you. But if you look at nuclear, um, they lost about three gigawatts in the past four years, um, which means that it could have been almost nine gigawatts if they have left the, left those reactors standing. Now, there were reasons why these reactors had to be shut down, among which uh, was the, the, the fact that uh, the graphite blocks apparently weren't, uh, weren't up to scratch. Uh, and they wanted to, if you want to refurbish these plants, uh, maybe, maybe cost prohibitive, I don't know. Um, uh, Chris Kiefer, who is a uh, who is a doctor and a nuclear activist in Canada, has made uh, Canada reconsider or Ontario reconsider um, their their uh, their decommissioning plans for a can do reactor, and they're actually going to refurbish that reactor, even though initially it looked like it would be uh, cost prohibitive. So maybe uh, something similar could be done for the. UK advanced gas cool reactors, but I don't know. In any case, the UK is going to need a lot more nuclear, uh, batting just on wind, uh, as is now being suggested. Well, it's not only wind, because obviously they are going to have sizable, sizable C, and they are going to have Hinkley Point C, which together will bring roughly 7.2 gigawatts of nuclear capacity uh, back online in the UK, which is enough to basically offset the loss of any nuclear reactor that would be oper that is operational today in the UK but I I, I think there's a very narrow-minded and myopic uh, vision of the future if you think that those reactors alone are enough 
to make sure to ensure that the UK uh, remains, you know, <clears throat> competitive in the economic uh, world. Something also very noticeable here is that um, the UK imports a lot of electricity from France and the Netherlands and other countries. Uh, roughly 30 terawatt hours per year, which is a lot. It's it's really a lot. Uh, that accounts for roughly 10% of all the electricity that is produced in the United Kingdom. If the UK were to have 24 gigawatts of nuclear capacity, they wouldn't need to import anything. Yeah. If we take 2023 as the benchmark. But again, I don't think that 2023 is the benchmark for 2040 or 2050. So that's going to be a thing. What I think is very important is that British people go to this uh, uh, this petition here and sign it. You can find it at uh, the weplanet.org uh, website. Uh, sign it. They need 500 signatures. There's only 367 at this moment. Um, and I think it's important that the UK stays committed to new nuclear power plants uh, because obviously they are going to need uh, a lot of power if they want to stay competitive in the future. Now, this is the end of this video. We've reached it. If so, if you're still here, thank you very much. Uh, please make sure that you uh, engage in the comment section. Please let me know what you think about this subject. Uh, leave a like because uh, comments and likes are actually the lifeblood of this channel. It tells the YouTube algorithm that, you know, I'm the real deal, that these videos are worth watching. And if you want to support the channel, if you want to support me because I don't have uh, a, a real stable income, please go to the Patreon website and sign up on my Patreon page. Thank you all for watching. I made a strong force. Be with you. Bye-bye.